In today's video, we're taking a look at how to make a DIY pool heater easy, simple, and cheap. This is so easy, anyone could do everything that we use on the video. We're going to leave a link on the description. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe. That does help us out a lot. Thank you. So you woke up today and went in the pool or you merely touched it with your hands, looked at the thermometer, and then you quickly looked at your body, saw that it was sculptured and beautiful and sexy and positive. But although you checked all the marks, you didn't order an ice bath. Don't worry, here at the Statabox team, we've got your back. And depending on your build, this could come under $50 or $100. It all depends on how much tubing you want and the strength of your pump. And the first item that we're going to need is a drip water hose that has a measurement of half an inch. And this particular one that we have has a length of 500 feet. And we got this one for around $47, but we're not going to use all of it. The remaining we're going to use on our garden in the future. You can also get 300 feet for around $33 or 100 feet for about $15. And the current pricing is at the time of the video. Always one thing to consider when choosing your length is that the more length, the more pump power you're going to need. And another thing, the more the water stays in the tubing, meaning the longer it is, the more time the water has to warm up. So if the tube is too short, it may not have enough time to heat up. And our second item is our pump. And this is in case you're not using your own pool pump to move the water around the tubing. And we decided to use a separate pump so we can control when we want the heating system to be on or off. And you can get these pumps from $15 all the way to $50, depending the strength. But remember, by using your own water filter pump from the pool, just adding an adapter from the size of your hose from the water filter pump to the size of the water drip hose, you can also use the pump from the pool. And in these particular types of pumps are used in ponds to create a water fountain feature. So on the kit, you're going to notice an adapter that goes on the top to be able to connect a hose. And depending on your particular pump, it may have different sizes. In this particular one, we're using the half an inch one. And to make the installation process a lot easier, we're going to go ahead and disconnect it from the pump or take it out from the kit and connect it directly to the hose first. So we're going to take our adapter and connect it on one end of the hose. We're going to use some pliers and we're going to make sure that we don't mess up the threads. Because the last thing you want is to have bought everything but not be able to use it or have a leak. So what we do is grab it from the inside and let the plier rest on the top without touching the threads. A pro tip, leaving the holes on the sun for a couple of minutes or hours is going to help loosen and soften the material of the holes to make inserting the adapter a lot easier. And meanwhile, the submergible pump is not connected and that's for safety reasons. We go ahead and twist it on the hose with the adapter. And our next item, and this is optional, we've got a drip irrigation fitting kit for half an inch. And on this particular kit, it came with tees, couplings, elbows, end caps, plugs, and more. But the only one that we're going to use are the two couplings. And we're going to use the same technique to install them, which is breaking your shirt, showing off your muscles, and pushing with all the strength of your body. But using some pliers will help too. And remember, placing it on the sun to soften also helps. And we say this item is optional because as you will see later on on the video, to do a test run, we connected the pump to all 500 feet. And even though that we got better temperatures because of the power of the pump that we got, it just gave us a drip at the end, which will take longer for the pool to heat up. So what we're doing is starting on a halfway point. And remember, this may not be your case. You can get the 300 foot hose and not have to cut it or get all 500 feet and get a more powerful pump. But remember, the technique is you don't want the water to pass so fast that it won't have time to heat up. So that's why finding a sweet spot between fast and slow is the way to go. And no, I'm not talking about that spot, even though that's a good one. So what we're doing in our case is dividing the hose into three equal amounts. 
and we do these experiments so you don't have to. So each amount of rope that we curled up measures about 166 feet. And we wink wink to that because we know we really just eyeballed it. You know how we do here at the Statabox team. So in our case, we're gonna go ahead and connect one pack of 166 with another pack of 166. And we're doing this because we noticed we only got five degrees extra when going from one amount of tubing. With two, we got 10 degrees warmer. Now that we verified that we have a tight connection, we even sweat it, pushing these tubes through the coupling. We showed off our sweat to our loved ones. Now we're heading outside. And the whole idea of this heating source is to use the sun. And if you notice, many non-electric pool heaters use this same technique. You either lay it on a grass, on a table, on a wood pallet, on a metal surface, on some plastic, and you coil it so as the water passes through each curb, the other tubing next to it helps them to heat up. So they all work on conjunction. How neat or beautiful your contraption or your coils look all depends on you and your time. But you know how we do here at the Statbox team. We always do worst case scenario. And to keep costs down, not creating a housing is going to do that. But if you want to spend the extra bucks to make it look nice, we salute you. In this case, we're using our outdoor picnic table, which at the same time, because of the lighter color, it kind of reflects some heat back to the tubing. And it also gets super hot. We're going to place it on an area where we get the most sun coverage. And remember, even though that in your case, you're using only one tube and not like ours cut in two, you can always create as many circles as you want. In this case, we have two because we have two tubes. But you can have one and have two circles, three circles, four circles, everybody gets a circle. Just remember, the more the tube faces the sun, the more heat is going to generate. But at the same time, you want them close to each other so their own heat helps the other. Now that we filled your brain with information, we're basically going to place our two ends on the pool. We're going to place the pump just a few inches underwater, enough to be submerged, and our other end just a few inches above the water. And another optional item is a clamp, because the last thing you want after heating up your pool water is to accidentally drain it as well. Another good thing about having a submergible pump is if you remove your pool every season, this would help you remove the pool water even faster. Or if you place a cover on your pool, it also helps you to remove the water. You just want to make sure that when you place it on the pool water, you clean it before unless you're working against yourself. In that case, we salute you. And now comes the moment of truth. You connect this bad boy or girl or both or none to a power source. Always remembering using safety, you wanna place the power source where it won't get wet. Because the last thing you want on a clear sunny day is to die. As you can see, with this amount of holes, we get a good stream. And the temperature that we have on the pool is 84.2 degrees Fahrenheit. We started at 80 degrees, so that means we've been moving up ever since. We've been running it for a few hours. Also, another thing to remember is as your pool water heats up and the water goes through the tubing and gets extra sun, it's going to get warmer and warmer. As you can see, the water is coming now at 92.3. It's been a semi cloudy day. So when the sun hits directly, we've seen all the way up to 95 and 96. When we were doing only one tubing, we were getting about 89, 88. But let's say we go ahead and connect all three tubes to all 500 feet, we get a little stream, but you can see the temperature does go up to 108, 109 degrees Fahrenheit, which is almost 15, 20 degrees more. And remember, this is on a semi sunny day. And this happens because the water stays more on the tube. And as it circulates slowly, it has more time to heat up. But at the same time, you lose the speed on which your pool heats up. 
So unless you're gonna tell your family, friends, or yourself to wait a couple of days, I think going with two is the way to go. But remember, depending on your pump strength and your hose amount, the length that you use varies. And that's why we went with 500 because you can always work your way down until that correct amount. Now you can pat yourself on the back for a job well done. You become a portable heating source for the world to have. Just don't let your loved one, partner, or spouse know about it. Don't forget, if you liked the video, please give us a thumbs up. That really helps. If you have any questions, place them in the comment section below. Either someone on the Satterbox team or someone on the YouTube community can help you out with an answer. Don't forget to subscribe, follow us on social media. Thank you for watching, and here's a link to our latest video.